can you really make a living as an artist? Okay, well, if you asked me that question, I would say yes. But if you asked me, should I make a living as an artist? My answer might be a little bit different. In the last four to five years since I started using Square, I've made about $200,000 in art sales, which is mind blowing. So you might be wondering if you are able to make enough money to support yourself as an artist, why don't you? Because I do not do art full time anymore. I chose not to. So if you're considering doing art full time, I made a list of six things to be aware of before you make the leap. And then also how I make the income that I do as an artist. All right, number one, there's a difference between making a living selling art and selling art to make a living. One is enjoyable, one is not. And obviously in 2024, selling your physical art is not the only way to monetize being an artist, but the same concept applies to everything. It could apply to making YouTube videos. There's a difference between making a living making YouTube videos and making YouTube videos to make a living. What I'm getting at here is when your passion comes first and then the money comes after, that's ideal. What isn't ideal is being forced to create to come up with the money, starting in a deficit and needing to reach a certain goal. The sales, the money, that should be a product of your hard work and creativity and not vice versa. See, where you can get into trouble is when you know that you need to make a certain amount of money to pay your bills and you're forced to do things that you wouldn't normally want to do as an artist. And then you can get yourself stuck in the cyclical pattern of not yet being finished with the paintings that you've already been paid for and spent that money on your bills, but also needing to generate more income for the next month. That was, that was the most stressful part for me because you, you learn over time that as a creative, as an artist, there will be feast and there will be famine. There will be a month where you make 12 grand and you think you're on top of the world and then the next month you can't even make $500. And as an artist, I didn't want to be a salesman. I wanted to be an artist. I wanted to paint. I didn't want to be out posting, making sales and sending out marketing emails. And, and although being an entrepreneur is an important aspect of being an artist and being able to sell your work, I did not want that to be the main part of my job. Okay. So that is consideration. Number one, if you're thinking about doing art full time, number two, taxes, you have to be aware of taxes. The government wants our money. And, uh, it never quite angered me as much as it did until I was, I felt like I was creating money out of nothing, you know, like, wow, I created this artwork and it turns into money. It felt like a superpower. And then, and then the government wanted half of it. So if you're about to make the leap to do art full time, make sure that your income that you're making is enough to sustain you if you can only keep 40% of it. I mean, hopefully you're already paying taxes on what you make, but I know how it goes, all right. Um, but here's the thing, if you're thinking, don't worry, Kayla, I'm just gonna write everything off and I'm just gonna fly under the radar. Fun fact, if you ever want to apply to buy a house or buy a car or um, apply for anything really that's gonna require you to prove your income when you're self-employed, uh, for self-employed individuals, they don't go off of your gross income like they do for regular uh, employed people. They go off of your net. And so if you are writing off your entire income so that you don't owe taxes, it shows that you have zero dollars in income and you will never qualify to buy a house. I know nobody wants to buy a house right now, but don't make a permanent decision for temporary comfort if you might wanna buy a house in the next five years. All right, number three is something that I like to refer to as the hose, uh, and it's about productivity. When I was working full time, and all I was doing was daydreaming every day about how much time I would have to paint would end up making more money, I told myself. And I had an endless flow of ideas and inspiration. I felt like I was like a, I was like a garden hose, you know, and someone had their thumb on it and they were holding the pressure in and I just had so many ideas that I just, it was gonna just explode out. But here's the thing, when I quit my job and I had every day to paint, it was like someone took the thumb off the hose and all of a sudden, it was just a trickle, you know, all that, all those ideas and inspiration and motivation I had. Um, I suddenly, I didn't really have as many ideas. I ran out of inspiration. I ran out of motivation and I didn't even end up being more productive with my art than I was when I worked full time and did it on the side. And this might just be something that affects me, but I know myself now and I know that I have to almost suppress my creativity in order to feel really inspired. I can't be able to sit and paint all day, every day, or I no longer really desire to. Okay, my fourth thing to consider before doing art full-time is um, isolation and this is gonna be different for everybody 
I do not thrive in isolation. I did not realize how important being around people on a day-to-day -day basis was for my mental health until I was no longer around people on a day-to-day -day basis. And I don't know if other artists can relate, but to be in a flow state of painting and creating can be a very emotional time. When I'm painting, I am really feeling I'm trying to immerse myself in the, the vibe of the painting. And for me, a lot of those paintings are linked to negative emotion. I think it is super healthy as an artist to let yourself sit in your feelings, um, but to do that all day, every day, and then not ever have any human contact, I think made me a little depressed. I'm not gonna lie. Balance, it's all about balance. Thing number five to be aware of before you do art full-time, passion. If you're anything like me, being obligated to do something just sucks the joy out of it. Like if I wanna clean my room, it's gonna be fun, but if my mom tells me I have to clean my room, I don't wanna clean my room. That is part of the reason that I personally enjoy not doing art for a living because I have learned about myself that my creativity has to flow freely. Sometimes I wanna paint every day for two weeks. Sometimes I wanna go three weeks without painting at all. In fact, it got to the point where I was doing so many custom paintings that the idea of just painting for fun sounded miserable. I, I didn't enjoy painting for like two straight years because I did it full time. Okay, number six is financial freedom and I know this is gonna sound really corny. I'm not trying to be a financial YouTuber, but for me personally, I it took me a while to realize that there, you know, there there's a fast route to financial freedom and there's a slow route. And being a self-employed artist was most definitely on the slow side. I want to retire as soon as possible and when people hear the word retire, they think of old people sitting in rocking chairs. I essentially just want to be able to make enough passive income so that as soon as possible, work becomes optional for me. It doesn't mean I don't wanna work. It doesn't mean I wanna quit my job as soon as possible. I would just like work to be optional as soon as possible so that I can have freedom. So by doing art full time and being taxed, you know, 40% and struggling to just make enough to pay my bills, there is no disposable income left over afterwards to put myself ahead, put myself closer to financial freedom. Whereas my current plan and what I do right now is I work and uh, all of, you know, my paycheck from my job pays all my bills and I still paint and I do art on the side and I have this YouTube channel and all of that extra art income for me is disposable. It is income that I can, uh, you know, take my son to do something fun if I want or invest for the future. And making money off of art is so much better. It feels so much better when that money is extra, when, when I can do whatever I want with it, when it's not just going directly towards the electric bill. Okay, now if you've made it this far in the video and you're like, Kayla, I, I still wanna do it. Tell me how, how do I make money with my art? Okay, I warned you. So now let's get into how I made that $200,000 in the last few years with my art business. There are really eight main income streams that I use that I make money with my art. Number one, the way I make the most income with my art is um, I'm a vendor at the local Saturday market and I have specific videos on each one of these income sources on my channel, but I set up a booth every Saturday, nine months out of the year. I'm from Eugene, Oregon, which is home of the largest open air market in the United States that happens every weekend. And I'm very fortunate that I live in a town that has such a thing, um, but I pretty much just sell my art at a local market and do not underestimate the amount of money that you can make selling your art at like craft fairs. Okay, number two is paint and sips. I opened my own little paint and sip studio. I turned a little warehouse into a paint and sip studio for a few years, actually about one year. And um, yeah, I, people would pay to come drink and paint with me. And that's pretty self-explanatory. I have a video on how to make money doing paint and sips without your own studio. You don't need a studio. I also just packed up my easels a lot and I would go to someone's house or someone's church or you know a bachelorette party and I would just lead a little tutorial. And you can make some good money by doing these private parties if you are outgoing and this seems like something you would want to do. They're really fun. All right, number three is murals. Uh, murals pay really well because they're really big projects. I've done a few, you know, multi-thousand dollar projects where I'm making $5,000 and I'm spending a week painting something on a wall in an Airbnb or a restaurant. I think I'll make a video here soon about how to get more mural gigs. Income number four would be just sales of my original paintings, selling like my original artwork that I create and I put it up for sale on my website. One of my goals is to sell my first $10,000 painting eventually. We'll see if I can get there. 
Okay, number five is custom paintings. I I really try not to do these anymore unless it's a very special project to me and it's sentimental. Um, but when I needed to, I did a lot of custom paintings. That's where I would have an option on my website. People could pick their size, they could purchase it, and then they'd email me the photo that they wanted me to paint. All right, number six would be like print sales, sales of merchandise online. Like I put my art on t-shirts, sweatshirts, posters, phone cases, all kinds of stuff. Number seven is brand deals. There was about a year and a half that I was sponsored by two companies and I would get a regular monthly paycheck to post branded content. I was sponsored by an energy drink company and by a live streaming app. So I would live stream one hour a week on the app and I would post two videos a month with this energy drink. And yeah, I would make a couple thousand dollars a month just doing that. That brings us to number eight, which just started being an income stream for me recently. And it is monetization on social media. So you're watching this video right now. I'm making revenue on this video right now. I'm making revenue on my reels on Instagram. Uh, it's never really been a substantial amount of income until recently. I am very grateful, very grateful that you guys watch my videos. It's kind of surreal to have, uh, I think I'm at 39,000 subscribers right now, which is crazy. I'm about to hit 40,000. I never thought my YouTube would take, my YouTube was kind of like an experiment. Hey, I'm so thankful. But yes, this is now one of my income streams. So there you go. If you're still trying to figure out if you wanna do art full time, hey, it does not hurt to try. Uh, I gave you my warnings of the things that I learned by doing art full time. Who knows where the future will take me? Who knows if I'll ever be a full-time artist again in my many years of life ahead. If I live to life expectancy of 92, I have 66 more years. I would hope actually that I don't work full-time for 66 more years. Let me know any questions or feedback you have in the comments below and yeah, go get creative and good luck selling your paintings. Let me know what you want another video about. Bye friends.